Hey everybody, welcome back to the Engineered Angler. This week we're gonna make some jigs. Now I've made jigs before out of stainless steel tubes and I did it to do some surf fishing. Now I'm revisiting that design of the dart, which was that original stainless steel tube casting dart jig that actually worked really well, had a good long cast, but had kind of a small profile. So I wanna make something with a little bigger profile and I wanna add one more dimension, the fourth dimension, which is smell. I wanna be able to infuse it with this gulp attractant scent. This stuff works really well when soft plastics are kind of impregnated with it. You get a lot of bites, not always what you want, but it definitely attracts a bite. So I'm gonna be using a slightly bigger stainless steel tube, and then we're gonna come up with a way to have the scent inside the body so it slow releases out. This should be fun, stick around. We're going to be working with these 10 millimeter stainless steel tubes. They're 10 centimeters long, which is just about four inches. They're 10 millimeter in diameter. And for you guys who hate when I use metric, it's 25 64 in diameter and 1 64 wall sickness. And I'll put a link to where I got these things uh, in the description. So to make the jig, I just have to manipulate this tube just a little bit. What I like to do is to squeeze the very end of it on uh, about a 30 degree angle. Then I'll round off these corners so I have a bit of a sloped edge, mostly for looks, but having a flat section is gonna make it easier for me to put the tie and eye in and to be able to mount a belly hook right here. And the tie and eye will be up here. And then I'll cut the tube on about a 45 degree angle back here in the back. And I'll drill a hole right there so I can get a split ring in there for the tail hook. Then I'll drill a hole through the top and inside the body, we'll put in the membrane, the material that we're gonna use as sort of a gland to absorb that stinky gulp stuff. And if you've never used gulp, and you don't know what it is, you might as well just stay away from it. It actually does work. You can buy soft plastics that are impregnated with this really heavy scent that really just absolutely stinks. And some people will just refuse to have them on the boat because if you ever have one just spill inside your tackle box, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I think on a lure like this, a jig that's moving really fast, that added scent trailing behind it might make all the difference between just a chaser or a fish that actually hits it. All right, so the first thing is to set it in a vise with about a quarter of an inch of the top part of the tube inside the area where it's gonna get squeezed. This way I have plenty to work with to drill a hole for that tie on eye. Then the angle is set to about 30 degrees. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm just gonna squeeze it down till it flattens that part of the tube. All right, that should have it. And you can see it's nice and flat and plenty of room to put a hole in for my belly hook. All right, I've gone ahead and done two because I want to have two of these things ready to go for a bit of an adventure I want to do. My idea is that I want to go to the beach, but not walking around only being able to cover a small area of the beach. I want to mechanize this. I want to be able to have some wheels and I want tackle to go along with it. And as far as the wheels go, you're going to have to wait for next episode to see what I'm talking about. So the next thing I want to do is go ahead and mark out where I want to sort of taper this off around the corners and where I want to put the hole for the tie and eye right about there. Then the hole for the belly hook right about there. And then when we have this nicely shaped, we'll cut the wedge off on the back. I'm gonna clean up these holes a little bit with this countersink bit. All right, that looks much better. We'll polish it up a little more too. I'm gonna to clean up the grind marks from that grind wheel on this belt.
All right, the next step is to go ahead and weigh this thing and see how much weight I will need to add to it. I want it to weigh about 20 grams, so I'm gonna put a bunch of split shot inside of it, and let's see how many I need to add. All right, that'll do it right there, four split shots. And I'll do the same to the other one. And I'll just drop these split shot in there and use this rod to ram this down in there, just kind of like loading a muzzle loader. And I don't want them just to sit in there. I want them to be well jammed in there so they, don't, they can't come out. So I'm going to compress them in there. All right, now you can really feel how head heavy this thing is. A little more like a jig. Now that I got those compacted lead balls in there, I can put this thing back in the vise, clamp it down with a little bit of authority. Not too much, I don't want to squash it. Set it at about a 45, and then I can just cut straight down. All right, that's one of them. I'll go ahead and clean it up on the grinder, round this off a little bit. And we still have to drill two holes, one for the hook and one on top to use as a fill for that gulp stink stuff. We got them both made up. These things are actually ready to paint right now. But actually, before I want to put paint in it, we've got to get the material inside that's going to hold on to the stinky juice. Let me show you what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this stuff. This is used for flower arrangements, I guess. It's called wet foam. It's designed to hold on to moisture. The idea is to get this stuff jammed up inside the tube, and then when you're ready to use it, you saturate it with some, some of that gulp scent or some scent maybe that you make. I mean, not you personally, but you know what I mean. All right, let's open this thing up and see if I can just kind of jam it in there, have it stay. This is actually kind of satisfying to do to shove this thing in there. And then just cut off the excess. Beautiful. All right, we're ready to paint, but this is really a perfect time for the question of the week. This is where I pick a question out of the comments and I answer a little more thoroughly than I can by just typing out an answer in the comments. And this week's question is about when I decide to use Pledge as a coat over the paint and when I decide to use polyacrylic as a mid coat over the paint. And the answer is pretty simple actually. I use this as a mid coat over any kind of silver or chrome spray that's sensitive to clear coat, and most of them are. And what I've found that with almost all of them, the Pledge Floor Wax preserves that chrome shine better than any other clear coat. But typically, even over chrome paint, I'll do some painting as well. I usually use transparent paint and add some details, maybe some scales, some highlighting, that sort of thing. And that paint would go on over the pledge. And when I'm done putting on paint, then I seal the actual paint with polyacrylic. That's my last mid coat. I let that dry really well. And then I know I can get a good clean clear coat without any blemishes. This is a really good base for epoxy clear coat, whether it's two part or UV cure. I hope that answers the question. And if any of you have a follow up, put it in the comments. And don't forget, if you have your own burning question, put it in the comments and hopefully it'll get selected to be answered on a video. All right, I think we're ready to paint. Now I'm gonna paint both these uh, saltwater lure colors. So I'll probably put a macro pattern on both of them, just kind of alter colors a little bit. I'm gonna make it up a little bit as I go along. So the first thing I wanna do is put down a base layer or a base paint. And I like using transparent paints whenever I have a metallic finish on the bottom. I'll start off with this gold yellow for the first one and this bright green 
for the second one. Now, what you end up with is kind of a candy apple finish. And these paints are from Badger Paints. Uh, and really, it, they're my absolute favorite transparent paints. Now, I want to keep the belly of it completely chrome. So I'll do the sides in this gold. And I hope you can see how that's going gold on me. Now I'm going to have to turn on the extractor fan in this paint booth. So we'll have to go to some background music and some dubbed over comments if I need to. Paint jobs aren't exactly the most inspired ever, but I'm considering these my beta versions. And if this works with that scent sponge in that body, then maybe I'll come up with some more enticing paint jobs. But for now, this will have to do. And now it's just a matter of letting these things dry pretty well, and then giving them a couple of good coats with the polyacrylic just to seal the paint. And while the polyacrylic dries on these guys, I wanna go ahead and prepare some kind of container that I can use to squeeze this gulp juice into that sponge. So I'm gonna see if maybe I have a little paint bottle or something with a small nozzle. I think I have, yep. I was hoping I had some of these bottles left over. Let's see what kind of nozzles they have. Ooh, this one has a nice, really thin nozzle. That actually might be too thin. I think that's gonna be perfect. All right, let's avoid any kind of mess. Because if you've ever spilled this stuff, you'll never want to spill it again. I'm going to pour it into this little measuring beaker here because it's got a nice pouring spout on it. Hopefully, I don't make a mess. Perfect. Didn't spill a drop. Man, this stuff, it just, it smells like rotten shrimp. All right, now we got a field bottle. Now, if you're wondering why this stuff looks so dark, especially since it really doesn't look that dark when you buy it and it's new, but over time it does get darker and darker. And I used to buy the gulp in little buckets like this. I haven't in a long time because I really, it's pretty rare for me 
to throw a gulp, I have to be pretty desperate for a bite. I have to be completely bored on the boat and need at least a pinfish to hit something. But as I use the buckets up, I've poured the leftover juice all in one bucket and this is probably six years old. So I got like a pint in here of the stinkiest stuff on the planet. All right, so while those things are setting up in there, I wanna go ahead and take the treble hook I'm gonna use for the tail on these jigs, and I wanna go ahead and dress them. And I don't want it to be a little feathery, delicate kind of affair. I want it to form kind of a dense little skirt in the back because I want it to cause some drag. As it's falling down through the water, I want it to cause drag. And then when I pull it up, it'll flare like fins. And then when you let it drop, it'll do it again. So hopefully that'll add to the tastiness of this jig. I got them out of the chamber. They look pretty good, I have to say. Even this guy, who I thought was a little bit of an ugly duckling, I really like this color scheme. I think the darker copper color really works nice. All right, last thing I have to do is just put a uh, split ring right here where I'm gonna put the tie eye. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so now we're ready to head out on the lake and I'll wait till we're on the lake to charge it up with the skunk juice. All right, we're out on the lake. Hopefully the sun will come back out and we'll get some good shots underwater. I'm not sure. These things are gonna sink pretty fast, so I'm not sure how well I'm gonna be able to actually capture what they look like underwater. So before I even do a test on these things in the water, I wanna go ahead and inject the gulp juice in one of them, at least just one of them. And I don't wanna do both of them because I gotta keep them in a Ziploc bag after I fill them with this stuff. So let's do the dark green one. Right now the, the level of the liquid's up to the top of the letters. So let's see how much we can actually get in there. Okay, that's a pretty good amount. I'm gonna say we got about a half an ounce in there. I think that's pretty good. I don't see any coming out of the end, but let's let's go until we get something come out of the end. There you go, it's starting to get dark on the end. Just a little more. There we go. It's actually bubbling out of the end. All right, so it'll have a really nasty smell coming out of the back end. No, that's pretty appropriate. It's not dripping or anything. It's actually saturated right to the end. So I imagine once the water starts blending in there, it will ooze it out really slowly. So the cloud's gonna shade the water pretty bad. Hopefully we can get some good shots, but we'll have to see. some good shots but we don't have time to fish because that squall is coming and it's coming fast
watching. If you like it, give me a like. Subscribe. And I'll see you next Friday.